Hi, and welcome to another episode of Outdoor Ohio. I'm KC, and while this may look like a giant deer rub, it's actually the beginning of a very special project that's pretty unique here in the state of Ohio. It brings together state and federal agencies on a very large scale, and it's a program that we hope is going to grow throughout Ohio like wildfire. We're going to tell you more about it on this episode of Outdoor Ohio. Welcome back to Outdoor Ohio. We're talking to one of the architects of a very unique project in the state of Ohio. It's a Savannah project, and uh, we're here with Donnie Knight. Uh, you're from this area of Ohio, and uh, you've kind of taken this project and made it very near and dear to your heart. Tell me all about it. Well, it's, um, it's an 80-acre site that um, we a landowner had contacted me and um, was interested in doing something. He didn't know what to do with it. So after walking the site, we um, we, with the, the oaks, the large oaks that we found, and some native vegetation that was, that was hanging on, um, we thought uh, Oak Savannah would be a good project for this. So we, uh, we found contractors and we began clearing a lot of where we're standing. Um, was choked with honey locusts, um, Osage orange, and a lot, of, a lot of aggressive trees that we didn't want in here. So right now we're in the process of clearing the site and um, we'll leave all the oaks and hickory species of trees and then we'll begin a management plan of a lot of burning, some herbicide suppression, and possibly some interseeding. Well, here's a, a seedling of the, uh, the honey locust, and this is one that we're gonna have to control pretty aggressively in the beginning stages of this. Um, you can see there's a seed source right here one of the larger trees that we haven't cleared. And uh, we'll have a lot of this. There's a, there's a high amount of seed source here from the years of these trees just stand, standing. So we have a lot of this to, uh, to clear and then we'll, for the next you know, three to five years, we're gonna have a lot of this stuff coming up and we'll use both fire and, and herbicide applications to control this. And we'll also, with the seed source, we're also gonna have some some root suckering, which is just simply sprouts coming off the trees that we've removed. This is uh, one of the larger honey locusts. Um, this site had a lot of, you know, a lot of smaller trees, but it had some larger trees as well. We're using a piece of equipment initially called a hydro axe, and essentially it's coming in and it's mowing up um, all the shrubs, the, it mows the grass, it cuts a lot of trees up to six inch, six inch diameter. Um, so what we'll be left with is a lot of big trees like this. Well, that's a nasty, gnarly thing. Yeah, the a lot thorns of thorns on that. Yeah. So what we'll do with these trees is um, we're going to go in and girdle the tree, which is simply we're just going to come in, make two rings all the way around the tree, um, one and then one below it. And we'll come in and we'll treat that with an approved herbicide. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to leave this tree standing and it'll kill it, so it'll create a tree snag, which is important for a lot of the, the um, songbirds and things that we, we'll be also managing for. How does this differ from CRP land? Well, it doesn't have cropping history is the biggest thing. Um, so it doesn't qualify for the CRP um, programs. However, it's, it's um, through another USDA program through NRCS that's called the WIP program. It's a wildlife habitat incentives program, and essentially it provides cost shares for establishment costs to create like an oak savanna, um, wetlands, prairie grasses, um, things like that. So we used um, WIP money, and then we've also partnered up, partnered up with um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and then the uh, local Pheasants Forever chapter has kicked in. So you're thinking maybe in three to five years you're going to see some beautiful wildflowers and maybe some deer and turkey running through? Oh yeah. And in terms of wildlife, you know, um, we'll have responses from deer, turkey, um, possibly pheasant, quail. It's managed for um, a host of wildlife species and then um, a lot of different songbirds as well. So. And that's just the beginning. There's a lot of other great wildlife habitat that's going to be grown out of that. And we're going to talk to somebody about that. 
Now, well, this may have been the brainchild of Donnie Knight from Pheasants Forever, that's not the only agency that's involved. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is involved at all. Now, Sergio here is from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and uh, you've got a big stake in this plan as well. Certainly, yeah. We have a program called Partners for Fish and Wildlife that was created about 20 years ago specifically to help private landowners develop habitat on their property. Um, it has no cropping requirements. It's a very flexible program. Generally, we do wetland restorations and grassland restorations. Um, and I jumped at the chance to get involved with this project because it's very rare that we get a chunk of land this big and a landowner that's going to be so flexible. There's some endangered species that you're hoping is going to make this place home. Correct. There are lots of non-game wildlife that will use this property. Um, it's going to be great for migratory warblers. There will be several species uh, that love the big oak trees. It will be great for Indiana bats, which are federally endangered. They'll love some of these standing dead trees that we'll have here. It'll be great for red-headed woodpeckers, which is a species that's in decline. So not only those game wildlife, but if there are landowners interested in bird watching, other types of wildlife, this is going to be very diverse. Now what has caused the lack in, of habitat for the bats and the birds in Ohio? Is it, is it predation or is it something else? Mainly it's loss of habitat. It's loss of this open structure that we're trying to create here. Um, this type of landscape used to be maintained by fire, maintained by grazing, and we've taken a lot of those elements off the landscape. So a lot of our oak trees aren't germinating. They're being crowded out by maples, by honey locust, by lots of different species. And that's the main reason we've lost all this wildlife. Um, any more landowners don't see a lot of standing dead trees for the bats. Um, a lot of landowners don't want bats. Well, that's they're true. Kind of creepy. That's true. <laughs> if you get up close to them, they're not really that creepy. <laughs> I don't want to get up close to them. <laughs> they're great for insect control. They love eating insects. Um, they don't really hurt anything at all. It's the more diversity you have on your property, the better it is for all of your wildlife, including your your game species. There's another great benefit to this site out here. Due to its geographic location here at this projected savanna site, with the Piot Castles and the Makachee Castles, and also a unique rechannelization stream design on the Mad River, one of the few native trout streams left in Ohio, this provides a unique opportunity for the landowners, producers, and anyone that would want to attend some workshops that we hope to host here in the future to cover some of the different practices and exactly the how-to, where we came from, and where we intend to go with these savanna sites. With any project like this, of course, the landowner is going to be of the utmost importance. So we just happened to find our landowner here. This is Jim White, and he's the one who has about 80 acres here uh, that he wanted to leave for future generations. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks this is a cool thing here. you're doing. This is uh, unbelievable. We were lucky to be able to purchase this. We got this uh, a year ago in April. And it had been pasture for all of its life. It never had a disc in it. And and it's been abandoned for about 20 years, so this is the result of the abandonment, and we're trying to get it back to it'll do something for the property. Now, you're a businessman. You understand business, and you understand the houses going up around you. What made you decide that you wanted to protect this land? Uh, it's exactly what you said. The houses going up around us, and we didn't like it. There's houses on the other side of this property that are going up. A farmer sold off the road frontage, and, and we just, just disagree with it. My wife and I uh, had been hoping to buy this piece of property back here. There's uh, 150 acres with it, and there's another 14 or 15 acres off the one point that we're going to do as well. And it's just, it's spectacular. Donnie, I called Donnie and we got into it uh, last fall, and Sergio, and since we started on it, now we're starting to see some wild turkeys that we've never seen here before, and we're starting to see other stuff just come, it's, it's just been really neat. That's great. And you know, in a few years, you're gonna have a beautiful patch of wildflowers and a whole new, uh, whole new forest of oak, and uh, it's gonna yeah, be beautiful. This, this, is, this is just fun. I mean, we've got the castles that are down below us, we've got the, the Mad River down below, and they're, uh, they're rerouting the river down here, so it's just, it's just a lot of good things happening up around here. It's awesome to meet landowners who not just think of themselves and now, but future generations. Not just the people whom I enjoy the land and what this land is going to offer, but the animals that are going to thrive and multiply and really do well here. This is what Outdoor Ohio is about. We like to show the fun, 
that the outdoors offers, but we like to show what you can do to keep it going for future generations. We'll see you next time on another episode of Outdoor Ohio.